Hello all. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, this week we are continuing with the weekly portion review. However, this week we're going to do something a little different, which is focus on the Haftarah. So this weekly uh, portion, which is the last portion of the book of Leviticus, is called By My Decrees, the Chukotai. And it speaks about what happens if we listen to God's commandments, what if, if we don't listen to God's commandments, and the ramifications. Uh, however, the Haftarah is a passage from the Book of Prophets that is traditionally read uh, publicly on Sabbath, and this is following the conclusion of the Torah portion reading. Uh, there is a dispute, sort of, when this uh, when this tradition emerges. Some say at the end of the of the prophetic period. Some say it's um, uh, Ezra, the scribe, uh, institutes this, and others say that this is because there was a time, a period of time, where uh, Jews were persecuted for or, or prohibited from learning the Torah, and so instead of learning from the five books or reading from the five books on their weekly portion, they read from the books of the prophets uh, as well. Instead, just to still maintain some sort of uh, 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 divine connection with uh, with the divine word. Uh, and so uh, this this week, I, I'll at, at mention one more thing that Jesus himself, and this is one of the the first evidence we have of the reading of the Eftara. We see this happening in uh, Nazareth, I believe, when Jesus is in synagogue and he's reading from the book of Isaiah. So that would be Haftarah. Uh, and so uh, in the Haftarah and the prophets, we're focusing on Jeremiah this time. And generally speaking, the Haftarah is shining a light or speaking about something that relates to the weekly portion. So in this week, Jeremiah has a complaint uh, about the spread of idolatry in Israel. And this is uh, specifically um, and especially significant given the spiritual changes happening in the world during that time. So this is at the end of the first temple period, right? And it was uh, foretold that uh, uh, at this time, it would be like the near, it would be the ending of idolatry or at, very, at the very least, it's been it's been weakened. And I'm just going to quote a verse of here, excuse me, from Jeremiah 16, 19. Okay. Oh, Lord, my strength, my fortress, my refuge, in times of trouble to you, the nations will come from the ends of the earth and say, our ancestors, ancestors inherited nothing but false, falsehoods, worthless idols that did no good. Right. So this vision is connected to the rise of also the critical thinking at the time, which we which we uh, attribute to the emergence of Greek science and philosophy. And again, these these, of course, challenged and uh, the, the mythological beliefs at the time, which were obviously very prevalent uh, in human thought. Uh, and uh, the, the the rabbis, the sages, and the Talmud also indicate that this is this shift is happening during the departure of the divine presence, right? Which is symbolized by this great fire from the holy of holies, and this is the end of prophecy, which uh, indirectly leads also to the decline of idolatry as well, right? There's a grain of truth inside idolatry, which we're feeling God's presence, the holiness in the world, and we're trying to connect to it through different avenues. So when prophecy leaves. Also, the stronghold of idolatry leaves as well, because those those true elements sort of are removed from from uh, this plane of existence. And one has to ask, though, it's a little puzzling. So when a world where idolatry is losing its relevance and its grip over us, uh, the people of, of God, the Israelites, are still being drawn to it. Right. So this is also the basis of the rebuke that he mentions in verse 20. We're in chapter 16, but in verse 20, he mentions, shall a man make God for himself, which are not gods? Like, how is this even happening? Meaning, right, so even in the eyes of the Israelites that are worshiping uh, uh, idols, it's still, in a certain way, lost its status. So there's a certain sense where there's a positive there's a positive element to the stubbornness of the Israelites, right? We're called a stiff-necked nation, and we, we're not easily swayed to repent, and we're not uh, easily impressed by rebuke, as we see in the books of Judges as well, and all throughout the, uh, the the 40 years in the desert, right? We need to really be convinced by the intellectual strength of the rebuker's argument or the prophet's argument, and it's not just their style. And the, the stiff-necked nature of the people of Israel also forces their history to be filled with extremes, crises, ups, downs, destruction, the temple is being rebuilt and then being destroyed again. And this also forces their identity to change as well. So Jeremiah tells us in verse 21, 
therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. I will cause them to know my hand, my might, and they shall know that my name is Lord. Right? So these extreme up and downs of the nature, and even the Talmud talked about when we're when the Israelites are doing God's will, no nation could dominate them. And when they're not doing God's will, they'll be handed over to other nations. Right? So misbehaving really threatens the nation's very existence. However, there is a mechanism that was prepared in advance to ensure the uh, eternity of the people of Israel. Right? We have the concept of the, the heavenly mikdash, the heavenly temple, which really means the desire of God to reveal himself in history through the, the people of Israel ultimately. And this was really present in the beginning of creation. And this is also the comforting idea that Jeremiah is telling us as well in this Haftarah, in chapter 17, verse 12, he says, a glorious throne exalted from the beginning in the place of our sanctuary. This is the source of hope for Israel. Oh, hope of Israel, the Lord. Right? So we could see over here that even though there's a rebuke, it ends with an optimistic note. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Right? So we have to realize that constantly God is reaching out to us. He's talking to us. He's trying to show us his faith. He's willing to dialogue with us. However, this is true about the Israelites, but throughout all nations of the world, we need to loosen our necks so we could divert our vision and see him, see him calling out to us as well. We are distracted, unfortunately, in today's world with many, many flashy little idols, whether it's money, technology, fame. And we need to realize that we have to be focusing in, orienting ourselves properly towards the divine message in the world, towards God's mission for us. I wish us a Shabbat Shalom and a uh, uh, weekend of clarity and tranquility.